Welcome to the big program, Local Focus, with Sebastian Noel. I'm your host, Sebastian Noel. We're back on the football track this week. We want to thank last week's guest, LaCueva Riley Ottman, for coming in and joining us. But we're back on the gridiron this week. And we are a people for the program. And so we get a lot, we get some requests every now and then. Every now and then, someone will hit up our show on Twitter and request a certain guest, right? And like it's happened in the past, I, I will say. But nothing. Like the like my inbox just flooding after the first time Cibola was on the game of the week. And usually when we get a request, it's like somebody's uncle or their grandma, like, hey, can you have her on? Or can you have him on? But after the Cibola game, here's all these strangers saying, you got to get this guy, you got to get this guy. So the people's champion, I'm going to start calling him, Nathan Lopez is my guest. <laughs> Welcome to the program, man. Thank you for you having me. You got quite a following out there. I, I couldn't believe it the next day, and it wouldn't stop. It kept going day after day, all these people texting and sending in messages saying, we got to talk to Nathan Lopez. So we're really excited to have you here, man. Thank you. How does that feel, though, to kind of have a, you got a little, you know, couple, feels, of, couple of weeks on TV, now you got a fan club. feels crazy, because I never would have expected that ever. Right? I mean, what do you think that is? It's obviously the underside thing has to do with that right yeah maybe maybe has, has it always kind of you know people have always kind of gravitated towards you because you're kind of that underdog story you're a little bit of a smaller guy yeah I've always been the shortest on the team always went the hardest though right this is not however your first time on ProView Networks right no we actually have some footage of maybe the first we went way back <laughs> in the archives and let's take a look you're gonna recognize a lot of faces on this video but this might be your first appearance on ProV Networks. My name is Lucas Armijo. I'm number 55, and I play center. My name is Christopher Johnson. I am number three, and I play wide receiver. Hi, my name is Stratton Schufel. I'm number 44, and I play tight end. My, my name is Isaiah Crispy. I'm number 33, and I'm middle linebacker. My name is Exodus Ayers. I'm number six, and I play quarterback. My name is Judy Casales. I'm number 10, and I play quarterback. My name is Paolo Montoya, and I play lineman, and my number is 23. Hi, my name is Jordan. I play a receiver. My number is 12. My name is Michael Knob, 59, and I'm a swing guard. My name is Kaden Hoola. I'm number 52, and I play defensive tackle and offensive tackle. My name is Arnold Marcus. I'm number 45, and I play quick guard. My name is Daniel Beck, and I play, and my number is 15, and I play strong guard. My name is Patrick Torres. I'm number one, and I play wing back and corner. My name is Jabby Cooper, and my number is number 22, and I play full. Uh, my name is Alex Rosales. So my number is nine, and I play tight end. My name is Kareem Edmond. My number is seven, and I play defensive end and nose guard. Uh, my name is Malik Felder. My number is 77, and I play defensive tackle. My name is Isaiah Sanchez, number 34, and I play offensive tackle. My name is Terrell Garcia. I'm number 36, and I play center. My name is Jaden Stevens. I'm number 24, and I play kicker, field goal, and running back. My name is Nicholas Segura. I play wide receiver, and my number is 2. My name is Lewis Childs. I'm tight end, and I play number 71. My name is Nathan Lopez, my number is 27, and I'm the wide receiver. Hi, my name is Marquise Renfro, my number is number 16, and I play running back. My name is Logan Arbogast, my number is 13, I play left guard. Adrian Perez, number 80, position receiver. Hi, my name is DeAndre Dixon, I'm a number 99, and I play offensive tackle. My name is Noah Villa. And my number is four, and I play running. Hi, my name is Mayu Robertson. I'm number 43, and I'm a running back. Hello, my name is Corley. Man, so a lot has changed since then. Uh, that was, by the way, a very nice bold cut you had back then. <laughs> uh, you know, as a bald guy, I always kind of admire hair. So you're, you're sporting a full <laughs> mullet now yep. versus that... that uh, that bold cut back then, man. But that was a pretty special team, wasn't it? It was. That was probably the best team. Is that the best team you've ever played on? Yeah, definitely. And you guys are kind of all over the place now, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. but you go, you look at that, and I mean, 
that was a very dominant team. I remember even doing some of those games. I mean, was that really the most competitive kind of... I mean, just tell us about that team a little bit, because you guys traveled and stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. We traveled a little bit. It was just... We put so much practice, and we all had these little wristbands. All of us were conditioned. So we all just... We're go, go, go all the time. How much, uh, how much smack talking goes on now with some of those guys since you guys are all at different places? But you guys are, all, I'm assuming you guys are all still pretty close. But there's got to be some good trash talking going on <laughs> since you're all in different spots, right? Yeah, just some little, just some love talk. Yeah, yeah. Who, I mean, who, who's, who's the most competitive guy on that team even back then? I'd probably have to say X. X, okay. So he's at La Cueva now. So obviously you guys played this yeah. year, right? So what was what was that like, uh, seeing your friend on the other side? That was fun. I wish I could have played corner, though. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you could've, I wish I could have played You think you would have got a, hands on a couple of those passes Maybe. to him, you think? Maybe. All right. That was a pretty successful team. What other sports did you play at that age when you were young? Only really basketball. I played for my... Uh, middle school team. Okay. That's fine. And basketball, football, I mean, where, where, where did, when did you discover that football was going to be at? Definitely since I was probably like 10. Okay. I loved it. But you did start playing other sports in, in school, right? Yeah. So tell us about that. It was just more of just trying new things. It's fun. So you're just bored, so you start picking up yeah. other sports, basically. Yeah. Or what other sports did you play? Mm, play tennis, wrestling, track. That's basically it. So that's kind of like all over the place, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's pretty cool. Like the 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 kind of the versatility in all those sports. All right, let's start with track. What drew you to track? My sister, she's so good at track. Okay. She went to volcano. She's like their triple jump, number one long jump, one state and. She was fast in their four by one team, so I was like, I want to do that. Okay, so you wanted to try that because of your sister. Now, what what drew you to tennis? That's the one that obviously stands out a little bit, right? Because that's yeah. that's that's one that's a little different, right? You can see a lot of football players doing track, but tennis. What what draw, what drew you to that? One of our coaches at Highland was our head tennis coach. Okay, so he'd always try and get some football players just come try it. You'll like it. All right. Taught me everything I knew, loved it. Right. What is it about tennis that you enjoyed so much? Mm, just I get to hit the ball, however. It's kind of like I get to mess around. Right. But and you're doing something different, right? Yeah. I mean, how is it like you do those other things to get a mental break sometimes too? Because I, I know a lot of guys tell me, you know, especially if they're, you know, really good at one sport, they like to do another one just to get a little mental break. I mean, did you, did you find that? Yeah, I did find that. But tennis sometimes it makes me so mad. Right. I can't imagine your kind of aggression on the tennis court. <laughs> like, is that, did that happen? Like, it's more of like, I get mad at myself. Mm -hmm. Cause I hit the ball too hard and you're like, oh. How long of an adjustment was, I mean, how, okay, let me ask you that. How long did it take you to like be respectable at tennis, right? Like I started golfing a year ago and like the first three months were pretty awful. And now like I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm not, you know, it's not embarrassing to go play. How long did it take you to get respectable at tennis? Definitely like a month. That's pretty quick. Yeah. Right. Well, what was the hardest thing about picking up tennis? Serve. Right. Serving is hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I mean, so what's the easiest thing you picked up? Just keeping it in play. Okay. All right. So who helped you with your serve? Because that is the hardest part of tennis, isn't it? Definitely our coach and one of my friends that play tennis with me. Right. And I'm just gonna throw this out there, but it's got to be harder to get the serve over the net when you're. <laughs> It was hard. a little shorter guy, it right? So hard. that so there's a whole nother thing right there, right? So I mean, how long did it take you to to get that down to serve? It took me like a little bit, but I got used to just hitting it soft and just getting ready for the other right. to just hit it as hard as you could. Ever. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Networks. 
Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Back with the People's Champion, Siebel is Nathan Lopez. We were talking about tennis and track earlier. We also did wrestling. What drew you to wrestling? Um, one of my friends on the Highland football team is a really good wrestler. And he was just like, come try it out. So I was like, all right. I never wanted to wear that little tight seat. I thought it was the most weirdest thing okay. ever. But you like um, you seem like that guy that would just want to hit somebody and like enjoy that. So are you that guy? I mean, it was fun. Okay, I liked right. it. I like wrestling. Okay, so you did that for you still do that now, or when did you stop wrestling? Mm, I stopped wrestling my sophomore year. Okay, um, what's the hardest thing to pick up there? Definitely just staying endurance. Okay, because and when someone puts you in like a choke, oh my gosh, you freak out. And you had a, a little scare, too, as a wrestler, right? Oh, like, yeah. Uh, tell us about that. I just broke my arm my freshman year ever trying it. Okay, tell me, how did that happen? We're, I was wrestling a junior at the time that yeah. had been wrestling for, like, years. And he put me in this move, and I just heard my arm snap, and I was like, oh, my arm's broken, bro. Okay, so did that was that the end of wrestling, pretty much, at that point? We were like, oh. But you did another year after yeah, that, Yeah, right? for that Because if I heard I'm my like, own bones snap, I would give up whatever sport that was. But you <laughs> kept at it, right? Yeah. Okay, so how does that? How did all those other sports help you, you think, as a football player? I think tennis helps you, like, moving quick. Wrestling, you just got to be... You got to be a dog for wrestling. Okay. And then football, I feel like it just all... Comes together. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's talk about that then. Um, you started off at Highland, right? Yes, sir. And tell us about... That had to be tough there because obviously everyone's seen in the news what's happened to the football program at Highland, right? The numbers are really low. Um, they're not playing a lot of games. Uh, so tell us about that first. I mean, how hard is it... I think people sometimes take it for granted how easy it is to play football at a at a school that has everything, all right? The all the facilities, all the numbers. How is it to play athletics at a place like Highland? Tell us about that. It was very different. You had to put everything into it. There was no, I don't want to show up this day. Like picking and choosing, it was either you, and if someone got hurt, that's like four spots on the field. Right. So... And how, and how tough were those early days on the field? It was it was pretty tough because I wanted to have my brother there with me. Then he tore his ACL in our scrimmage, and that's who I looked up to, and I was like, dang, I got to do this myself. Right, and how, and how, I mean, how rough was that from, you know, you've got a limited number of guys anyway, but now your brother is hurt, he's done for the year. How did, what, how did you react to that? How did you stay motivated? Because it sounds like you guys really wanted to play together, right? Yeah. So at that point, he goes down. I mean, it would have been really easy for you to say, ah, you know, I'm done with this too. But you didn't. So tell us about that. You know, how did you stay motivated? 
Well, like, a lot of those older kids on that football team, they looked up to me even though I was, like, an incoming freshman. Mm -hmm. So, like, they looked up to me, so I was like, I got to help them get better so we could all get better for our next year. Right. And, um, I mean, you guys had a... Wins and losses, obviously, were not what you guys wanted, but, like, a competitive season, right, even though your brother went down. I mean, so when you look back at your time at Highland playing football there, how do you look back at that time? Do you look at it as a positive? Yeah, I look at it as a positive for sure because I had a lot of – we had a lot of success over there. We made it to the playoffs for, like, the first time in 13 years. We did a lot of good things over there. People started to, you know, your attendance increased towards the end of that season. I remember it because I think I had a Highland game that year. You know, the attendance started to pick up a little bit. People started noticing. You know, when you win at a place like Highland or you, you're competitive at a place like Highland, it seems to be really special in the community. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, like, when we were doing that, it was like everyone was coming together. We'd get, like, Instagram posts from people we never knew supporting us there. So yeah. it, was, it was cool. Now, obviously, you make the move, right? You transfer to Cibola. At that point, like, are people telling you, oh, man, you're supposed to be the savior that saved Highland? Like, did you get some of that? or I'm, I got a little bit of that, <laughs> yeah. but I had to be with my family. Right. More. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us about that transition. I mean, not, it's, it's, you know, people always talk about the sports aspect of it, but, you know, new school, different academics, all that stuff. Tell us about that first. Tell us, away from the football, what was the transition like? It was going to be real different since we had that COVID year. And then I was trying to go to that new school. Didn't know no one, had no friends, never lived over there. So it was starting fresh. I mean, Highland Highland's a pretty small school now. Cibola's enrollment is still pretty high. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just that kind of, that's a huge difference. I mean, who who helped you out the most in that transition? Probably my parents and Coach Williams and... My brother-in-law that coaches. Is Coach Williams as cool as he seems? Because oh, yeah. I think the world of Coach Williams. I think he is just oh, yeah. a great guy. I think he'd be awesome to play for. Uh, is he that guy? He's that guy. Okay, that, that's good to hear. You know. So, okay, but the COVID year, how did that mess up your transition? That totally messed me up. But I got to get so much closer to the football team, but I didn't know no one at school, never went into the school. So I just like. So would it be fair to say that maybe it helped on the football side, but on the yeah, other side it was a little different. On the school side, it was so much different. Okay, and but let's talk about the football side of things first. I mean, you get there. What's your, can you tell us about your first time meeting Coach Williams and just your teammates? So I I've known Coach Williams since I was like ten years old. I used to babysit how sit like his kids at okay. his daycare so I've known Williams for a little okay. bit and then when I got there I was so excited to play for him so natural fit right away yeah okay all right well I do want to ask you about how COVID changed everything so we'll take our final time out we'll come back with Nathan we'll talk about how COVID changed that year and we'll get forward to this season as well the energy landscape is limitless and ever-changing cleaner energy resources are crucial to New Mexico's environment for 100 years, PNM has utilized cutting-edge technology and employed hard-working New Mexicans to ensure that we have consistent, reliable energy when we need it. For life's loudest moments, quietest moments, and every moment in between, we're dedicated to providing you with energy now and into the future. All you have to do is dream of what to do with it next. High school sports are back. You can watch every ProView Network broadcast online on the NFHS Network. Every moment from every game from every sport, including all NMAA state championship games. Get your monthly pass now. Just go to ProViewNetworks.com, click on the NFHS logo, and sign up today. Watch New Mexico's best.
We here at Clark's Pet Emporium welcome you to bring in your pets. We know that having your pet with you makes the experience of shopping for them even better. And we welcome you to bring your kids also. Clark's Pet Emporium, your pet's second best friend. Back with Siebel is Nathan Lopez. We're talking about your transition to the Cougars and how COVID kind of changed everything. But you did mention that it kind of made the football side of it easy because that's really all you guys could do at that point was kind of, you know, a little bit of team bonding and stuff since campus and all that was different. So tell us about that. I mean, how, tell us about your, how did you bond with your teammates during COVID? How did that chemistry form? Because it seems like you guys are a really tight group. Yeah. So when I got there, we all just, they took me in right away, which I was not expecting. Took me in like a brother, learned everything. We hung out a lot before we even like started to practice right. more. So then we like built a friendship and then when it got on the field, we were all business, all pushing each other as hard, hard as you could. What was that connection with Aiden like when you first came over? It was, it's special, it's so different. I never would have ever expected me to have such a brother so soon. Right. What, I mean, the first time he calls you at like, hey, it's we're going to go work out at 5 a.m. What's that like? like how would that go the first time? Like, did you kind of realize right away, like, oh, this is serious? I was like, it's business. It's time to get, it's right. time to get at it. And so that chemistry, I mean, are you the, are you the receiver and quarterback duo that like does everything together? Because it seems like that's his deal, right? Like he's, like, I always joke with him, like, he's like a 30-year-old stuck in a high school person's <laughs> body, right? Because he's, like, so all about business when it comes to playing quarterback, right? Yeah. Like, Mr. Quarterback. So what's that like from the receiver side of things? What is it like having a quarterback like that? It's the best because you can just go up to him, ask him anything, knows everything, and it's just so helpful. And is he, like, is he, like... Are we talking like Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers nerdy type where he's like, hey, I think we could do this one play. And like, does he do stuff like that too or Some, no? Sometimes. Okay. There's a couple of times. All right. Okay. I, I dig that, man. I dig that. So when did it kind of click on the field? Like when did you realize, hey, we, we got a special offense here. When did that kind of happen on the field? Well, during COVID, we were doing seven on sevens, doing like our own private ones. Right. We'd like call Rio Rancho or call Volcano or something, set up a seven on seven. Right. And that's when I was like, this is the best quarterback I've ever had. Right. And our chemistry was just unmatched. So now let's fast forward. First of all, you had that little three game season. Did you guys think you'd even have a season? How hard was it to get up every morning knowing that you might not have a season? It was tough, but. I wanted to do it for the seniors because I knew that was going to be me one year. Right. I was hoping we really got a season. And three games was... Is it tough to put in that kind of work for three oh, games? Oh, yeah. It was tough to, like, work the whole year, all summer, then to only have those three games. It sucked, yeah. All right, so you get into this year. Expectations are at an all-time high, right? Yeah. I mean, you start the year... Everyone's talking about your team. Everyone's talking about Aiden. Everyone's talking about, hey, this is the year, right? Coach Williams, I would talk with you guys at the beginning of the year about expectations or just kind of go about your business. How did that go? Not really. We just stick to what he tells us every day, dog chi, discipline, attitude, work, work ethic, greatness, toughness. Right. Stick to that every day. Man, I want to go put on a helmet right now. <laughs> Play for Coach Williams. All right, so you guys play a ridiculously brutal schedule over there at Cibola, yes, right? Sir. So, I mean, to kind of take us through some of that, you know, especially at the beginning of the season. Take us through those first couple of games. First couple of games, we knew what we had ahead of us. It was just taking one game at a time, trying not to worry about the team ahead so then we forget about who we're actually right. playing. Um, district play starts. You guys have... Rio, Cleveland, back-to-back. -back. I mean, that is as difficult as it gets. Talk about that. It's so difficult when you have so many injuries on the team. We have, like, eight torn ACLs. 
our starting linebackers out. I mean, you know, I know coaches love to say, oh, next man up, but eventually there's not a next man, yeah. right? Like, it gets to that point, right, where you guys are just, you're getting thin, right? I mean, it's a hard season, and you're getting thin, right? I mean, yeah. like, that's kind of where you guys are at, right? Yeah, I expect I mean, How do you guys get through that in practice? Are people playing out of position? I mean, how are you guys kind of working through those struggles? We have, well, you just have to, if you don't want to play it, you're going to have to play it kind of thing. Right. Suck it up. And are you like, hey, I played like six positions at Highland. What's the big deal? <laughs> like, I mean, you still have that to fall back yeah. on, right? Because you're used to it. Yeah. So when now that I have a little, or other person's out, I'll be going somewhere else. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm going to throw this out there. In your mind, all of your guys is, you guys have a lot of seniors on that team. This kind of has to be the year, right? Yeah. So that's got to be worrying on you guys, right? That's got to that's got to create a little extra pressure, mm. knowing that this should be the year because you have so many seniors, right? Yeah, more a Tell little pressure, a lot of little pressure, more motivation though. Right. So we could, we all played with each other for a little while. Like I've played with Ryan. Since when he had it, he's had that long hair since he was in like fifth grade. Yeah. So you guys might be the nicest looking hair team <laughs> in the city, right? Like <laughs> Aiden's got his locks, like you're rocking the mullet. Isn't that, wasn't that colored at some point in the season? It was, two? it was. Like, blonde. can we look at that? Can you take that? That is like major league. Like, the, I've yes, seen sir. some mullets before, but that is major <laughs> league mullet right there. Like, you guys have bets on the team sometimes? Like, hey, maybe if I score three, it'll go blonde. Like, you ever do crazy stuff like that? I, I know wish. wrestlers do that stuff, so. For district, we are going to do our hair purple, all of us. But why we're, we're probably going to do that for state. Why, why purple? That's just what we came up with. Thing? Yeah. Okay, all right. That is a weird color, color choice, right? <laughs> all right, so we're getting towards the end of the season. I guess what everyone says at the end of the season is, hey, we just got to get in the tournament and then anything can happen, right? Is that your mindset right now? Finish strong, get in the tournament, see what can happen? Finish strong and we know we're going to do damage in the playoffs okay. for sure. All right, I got to ask now. I talked about it at the beginning of the show, you know, like all these randoms just hitting us up saying, hey, you got to get this guy on, t you got to get this guy on your show, you got to get on this guy on your show. You guys have been on TV a lot as the game of the week, right? Yeah. A little bit added pressure to go out there and, and perform, knowing that, you know, like you're the people's champ now? I mean, not really. I just go out there and I want to put on for my boys out there. Right. I want to win. What's next for you? Because I'm sure you've had to hear a lot of times in your life, you're too small to play at the next level. You're too small to do this. You're small to do that. You're too small. You've probably heard that nonsense oh, yeah, a, lot, a lot, right? Yeah. So what's, what are your goals? What's next for you? I'm going to college. I'm going to go to college out of state. On a scholarship for sure right. for football. We compared you to a gladiator, which is Delo Davis is a gladiator here in town. And he, same thing, guy's undersized, but he's the biggest dog we know, man. Well, we appreciate you coming in. It's been it's been uh, really nice to get to meet you a little bit. And, uh, you know, we got to give the people what they want. So <laughs> People's sure. Champion came in today. Thanks a lot for coming in. Good Thank luck the rest of the way. Stay healthy. Me. Thanks for watching, everyone, and good night.